Now, on this video, we are trying to find the values of R and alpha. And in order to do this, looking at the question, it tells us to write the following trigonometric expression in the form of R cos theta plus alpha, where both R and alpha are constants. Now, in order to do this, the easiest way to tackle this is to firstly realize that we can equate and we should notice that 5 cos alpha minus 2 sine theta is identical identical to the R expression. That is, we can say let 5 cos theta minus 2 sine theta be identical to, and then all we have to do is expand the cos alpha plus cos theta plus alpha expression into the full angle equation or the double angle. So it should be known, it, should, it can be written as R bracket cos theta times cos alpha minus sine theta times sine alpha. And now from here we just simply going to equate the coefficients. So notice on the left side we have a cos theta on both and we have a sine theta on both. So letting, so in terms of cos theta we can say 5 cos theta equals r cos theta times cos alpha. Canceling down the cos theta should give us r cos alpha equals 5. Likewise we repeat the same process for sine because they both have negative we can, we can ignore that and say 2 sine theta on the left hand side equals r sine theta times r sine alpha on the right hand side. Once again, eliminating the sine theta should leave us with r sine alpha equals 2. Alright, now, at this stage we need to figure out how to find um, r and alpha. So, one cool technique we could use is a nice trigonometric um, identity. We know that firstly, sine over cos equals tan. And if we do r sine alpha over r cos alpha, we can easily cancelled on R, so we'll be left with exactly tan, and this is of course equal to 2 over 5 from both equations. And all you have to do simply is now make sure your calculus and radians end simply tan inverse 2 over 5, and that should give you 0 0.381 radians. That's it. Now as for R, how to do R? So since, so actually for R, all we can do is use a, we can use them um, two ways, but in this case we're going to use the, a trigonometric identity. First things first, we should know off the bat, by now at least, that sine squared alpha plus cos squared would always equal 1, at least if they're both alphas. So therefore, since we know that cos alpha equals 5 over r and sine alpha equals 2 over r, we know that this following expression can work. So just literally popping in the values, so we have sine squared alpha, which is literally 2 over r all squared, it gives us 4 over r squared, plus cos squared alpha, which is just squaring 5 over r, which is 25 over r squared. And all of that equals 1. And that's it, guys. Now we just add up the, um, the fractions. This should give us 29 over r squared equals 1. And then, therefore, we should get r squared equals 29. And hence, r equals plus minus root 29. And if you remember from the question, it tells us that r has to be positive. So therefore, the only positive answer is r equals root 29. Now, the best way to do this is to realize that we're trying to get a cos and a sine. And, of course, we, we start with a cot and a cos. So, first things first, I would convert everything into cos and sine. So, what is cot 2x? Cot 2x is literally the same as the opposite tan. So, instead of sine over cos, it's cos over sine. And, of course, they're both 2x. Now, as for cosec, cosec 2x is the same as 1 over sine 2x. And that's it guys, all you want to do now is substitute back in and see what happens. So replacing these two with the following identities, we should get 5 times cot 2x, which is, oh my god, this warning is annoying. Cot 2x, which is the same as cos 2x over sine 2x, alright? Minus 3 times cosec, which is 1 over sine 2x equals 2. Now, what happens here? So, notice how we've got sine 2x at the bottom. So, what I would do is just multiply everything by sine 2x to clear it. So, we're going to end sine 2x a bit here. So, we're going to get 5 cos 2x minus 3 equals 2 sine x. 
to sine 2x and therefore rearranging it so it looks like this subtracting this and plusing 3 we're going to therefore get 5 cos 2x minus 2 sine 2x equals 3 and therefore the value c is 3. okay part c so hence or otherwise solve within the following range between 0 and pi for the following equation which we already found out what can also be written like this giving the answer to two decimal place now just looking at this head-on we should know that we cannot actually solve this easily in its current form this is why if we look back at part a which i should have over here we were able to find out that this equation can be rewritten this form and if you notice the thetas here are actually simply substitute for 2x so the 2x here and the theta are actually the same so we can say that this equation can be rewritten as r cos Instead of theta plus alpha, it's going to be 2x plus alpha. And this is all, of course, equal to 3. So that's, that's what we're dealing with. Now, what were the values of r? Well, r was found to be, I believe, root 29 cos. And then we've got 2x plus. And then the alpha here, I think, was 0. Yep, 0 0.381 radians. Okay equals 3 and yeah now we just simply solve this so all we can do is just divide it by root 29 and then cos inverse so this should give us 2x plus 0 0.381 equals the cos inverse over 3 over root 29 and if you enter this in the calculator remember to always keep your solutions in um, radians you should get a solution of 0 0.9799 so let me put on this side so therefore, all of this expression here, uh, 2x plus 0 0.381 should equal, um, okay, two decimal places, yeah. So let's just say 0 0.98 radians. So that's our first solution. Now, and of course, now the, now the easy part is literally throwing this in a cost diagram. So doing a cost, so uh, it's kind of hard to do neat here. I could use... The, the, the straight edges, but it's fine. It's going to be rough. So using the cos diagram, we should know that we're working with cos. So this means C is positive and A is always positive. And they both have an angle width of, um, what's it? Of, uh, an angle of, um, yep, 0 0.98. All right. And remember, this applies for um, from the range of 2x. So because we're working with this entire range here, Therefore, we can kind of expand this by adding two, by firstly, adding 0 0.381 across, uh, doubling it first and adding 0 0.81. So our new range is 0 greater, well, 0, 0 0.381 greater or equal than 2x plus 0 0.381 less than 2 pi plus 0 0.381. So this, this is our new kind of interval for the cost. Yeah? So this is where we can actually go now. And just for the sake of uh, making it easier, 0 0.31 is less than this value, so we can only do two circles. So our only solutions, of course, would be the one we have and all the way around here, which is 2 pi take away this value. So our second solution is 2 pi minus 0 0.98. Now, to find the value of x, all we have to do now is just solve this equation. So this tells you that the two solutions are 0 0.98 and 2 pi minus 0 0.98, which equals to this equation here. So all we have to do now is subtract 0 0.381 to both of these and divide it by 2. So hence, the first value x should be, or I should have done it beforehand, 0.98 minus 0.381, all divided by 2, should give us, firstly, Two decimal places, 0 0.30, rounded up. And uh, for the second one, first we got 2 pi minus 0.98. Now we subtract against 0.381 and divide it by 2, and we should get 2.46. 2.46. And that's it, guys. I hope this video helped and um, you got your answers. So, quite easy, well, not, not completely easy. You just have to realize that this is a type of equation which can only be solved using the r cause expression and once we plug in and use the cost diagram realize that we just have to do this final step in the end then we'll get answers
Anyway, I hope this video helped and uh, let me know if any more questions and I shall see you guys soon. Ciao. Thank you.